fans, hyper fans and people lost looking for videos of cats on YouTube. I am filming this video on June the 15th, which is the first day in the UK that non-essential stores have been open. So this means clothing stores, toy shops have been open. A few of these shops have been open for click and collect, but this is the first time that I could actually go in and look at toys on shelves. And I wasn't gonna go out, but I did have to get some essentials. And I actually finally picked up the Lennard alien figures. Um, I got the alien queen, the alien runner, and the alien warrior with egg. There are a couple more sets, but again, because of coronavirus, they've not been available in the UK. But rather than try and hold out for all of them to be in stock at once, I wanted to get myself some toys and cheer myself up. I don't usually get brand new toys in packaging. So let's take a moment to see how these are actually boxed up. Um, each of them have got these little paper cutouts. Um, the egg is in both of them. You've got a blue alien warrior in that one. This actually makes me a little bit excited about what they're going to do with the range in the future because this is from Lennard. Um, most people will have seen Lennard toys as sort of these very cheap G.I. Joe toys, but they are doing more. They ended up doing the Kong Skull Island figures, which were really well done. Um, but Aliens is a very weird license for them to get. Lennard also do some Nerf style toys, and if they end up doing some Colonial Marines pulse rifles, I'm, I'm just going to buy those on first day. Anyway, the artwork on these it's very cartoonish, it very much makes me think of Operation Aliens, which was the cartoon that Kenner was supposed to be paying for so they could sell toys based on an 18 movie to kids. But there is definitely sort of this late 80s, early 90s feel to the packaging and the figures. Um, this one comes with an alien egg, a face hugger, the research scientists, I think it's like their core space marines being repainted, but I quite like the look of this. It tells you what the figure is, um, gives you, yeah, I just want to say that. The figure is the alien, the human is the accessory. You know, you, you are given, it's like when you buy a pet toy and they give you something to feed it. Same illustration from the front all the different creature classes and evolution stages. You've got some interesting backgrounds in there that actually look like they're taken from the first movie, but I'll look at those in a second. Uh, absolutely identical packaging on the second small set. And then you've got the alien queen who is an open fronted box so you can try out the action feature um yeah this this alien collection font is like a, a completely different artistic style but it, it's all really nice um and then just a little bit more detail there of what you're going to be able to do with the figure because obviously there's no other accessories in there. Um, I think I probably would have liked maybe a couple of real alien eggs in there, but um, the fact that the tail is separate makes me think that maybe they're planning an egg laying variant later. But enough about boxes, let's open these up. Okay, so the first thing I want to say about this is that once you've actually got it out of the box, there's a lot less content than you might originally think. Um, if I just... Actually, I'm just going to leave this sort of semi-attached for now. Um, the sculpts on these are amazing. Um, I, everything else I'm going to call an accessory and just have a look at this runner alien. So this is based off of the Dogburster alien from Alien 3. It's a sleeker crouching one with that 
very distinctive knife tail. Um, and just as I was putting it out of the package, I... Uh, okay, where to start? Okay, let's talk about the plastic first, because you think about aliens being sort of this black, maybe blue-black, hides in the pipes and you've got these really cartoonish sort of pink yellow and purple aliens the plastic is really nice um i think that's picking up quite well it's got that sort of very swirled pearlescent effect to it it's really quite organic looking um no paint other than the silver on the teeth and the sculpting inside the mouth is really nice you can see the second jaws there uh, lots of ball joints being used, uh, universals at the elbow, universals at the wrist, um, just a mushroom peg at the hands, but it's so... smooth and action, and it's all quite stiff, so it's holding the positions. Legs, not so much, you've got like one friction joint at the hips, you've got nothing at the waist, the tail is on a ball joint. Um, but yeah, with all of that movement in the arms, you can just get some really nice poses. I mean, if you do stop motion with these things, they can look fantastic. Um, the plastic is sort of, it's not like super soft rubbery, um, the head is hard plastic, the fingers are a little bit more give to them, the legs have got some bend, the tail is actually a lot stiffer than I thought it was going to be, um, and the blade at the end is a soft plastic. It's really good. I mean, it has this sort of creepy newborn wetness to it. It's just like kids' toys, horrifying. If we turn to the human figure for a moment and ignore the fact it's got that really dreadfully painted face, um, it has universal joints throughout the arms, nothing at the, the wrist. The legs are on two hinges. There is a waist swivel, there is a head swivel, um, but you know, the, these are fodder figures and these are really repaints of their older line just to fit out the packet. But it does give us an idea how big they think the aliens are. Yeah, I'm going to just tilt this back up a little bit. They stand at about four inches. So these aliens will work with three and three quarter inch figures, or what's more exciting to me is they'll go pretty well with that four inch predator figure that I reviewed at the beginning of lockdown. I think those two make a really nice pairing. So we may as well mention the other two accessories that come in the box. The plastic one being this absolutely ridiculous space bike. Um, again, it's just recycled out of Lennard's The Core Space Series, but it's got some really nice details on it, a super 90s barcode because everybody knows that that's what makes sci-fi things cool, and the Wayland Uteni Corp logo. So that's cooler than it deserves to be really. Um, paint on it's quite nice. Again, it's a silverish plastic. Um, not swirly this time, so hopefully it won't end up falling apart, although I'm not sure that you're gonna wanna sort of keep that on display. It also comes with a swarm of alien eggs, or at least a cardboard cutout of them. It's a little bit cheap, but it's a nice way of using the artwork, and again, this is the thing that makes me think we may be getting dark blasters further down the line, because these are perfect 
nerf targets. So the second box is far more alien heavy. It gives us not only an alien warrior along with his human lunch, but it gives us a xenomorph egg and a face hugger. Again, we have a cardboard target. Here we actually have another full alien warrior, very much based on the toy. The spacesuit is actually this set you could say is the alien one set because this is far more like Kane's spacesuit from the first alien film. He is all set to be face hugged. Um, these don't actually sort of clip on particularly well. Uh, the old Kenner figures came with face huggers that would actually wrap around a figure's face. Um, these are a harder plastic than they used to be. Um, I'm probably going to permanently bond that on there because again, like with the first one, the face paint is not particularly great. Um, again, he's got universals on the hands, um, two joints on the legs. The helmet is actually removable, but it's a pain to pop. Didn't mention the gun on the other one because it's it's literally sort of the, the thinnest, most ridiculous firearm that you could imagine. So that's gonna go straight into the bits box. The egg is very cartoonish. Um, if you are used to the NECA ones, yeah, this is nothing like that. It's a very soft rubber. Um, one of the nice things is that all of the legal information is on a sticker that you can just peel off um, rather than being obnoxiously moulded in. Um, there's a little bit on the bottom, uh, basically just the CE mark, manufacturer, place manufacturer, year and licensing. Um, it looks far more like a plant bulb than an alien egg but it, it's nice to actually have one of those it's a shame that you can't buy these separately so you could sort of have a whole stack of those but in the end what you're buying this box for is the alien um he's not quite the alien one big chap he's definitely i would say closer to the aliens warrior aliens um, I know I'm using aliens a lot. Xenomorphs, we'll call them xenomorphs. The head is actually just on a standard turn. The arms are on universal and there's no articulation all the way down to the wrists, which are on little ball joints. The tail is on a turn. So what happened to all of that articulation we had with the runner? Uh, well, we have got a ball joint at the waist. We have got universals. At, no, we actually have ball joints at the thighs. We have a simple peg joint at the knee. And we have a ball joint at the feet. So you should actually be able to get some slightly better poses out of this one. So I also just wanted to compare these Lennard figures with the original Kenner alien figures. Um, this is from the Predator Alien 2 pack and is probably the closest to the movie Alien that they did. And if I compare him to the Alien Warrior here, apart from the colour difference, He's actually only about like half a centimetre taller. Uh, the arms are as gangly, the tail is a little bit shorter, but actually far more detailed. Um, his back pipes are a little bit shorter, the neck tongue, I guess, is actually more detailed but it seems a little bit softer in the sculpt they're definitely comparable um and if you wanted to have a golden alien amongst a 
flock of these, he wouldn't look out of place. If you wanted to spray paint this black and have it as some false perspective, it would look great. Um, the feet are far better sculpted and the Arctic, I mean, th this is a, a five point, well, six point with the tail of articulation figure compared to nine points on this guy. So yeah, um, I think the Lenard alien actually wins out. And finally, we got the alien queen herself. And this is gonna be a nightmare to try and film because it's actually bigger than my standard setup, so. So whereas practically everything else I've unboxed today has really been padded out to give you an impression of getting more than you've paid for, um, the Alien Queen is huge. Um, I'm trying not to mess the box up too much because I think this is probably going to be the best chance of showing you the background. And yeah, the, the background is actually a painted scene from the Nostromo, which is the ship from the first Alien film. This one's so big, you do have a little bit of assembly. Um, this is exactly the same as the cardboard cutout from the first one, so I'm just going to leave that in the box for now. And that's just a split mushroom peg, so once that goes in, that's not coming out again without breaking it. The spine lines up, pointing down. And oh, that's a big figure. That's a huge figure. Um, when Kenna did their Alien Queen, it was a little bit larger than the standard figures but but this is immense this figure retails in the UK for 20 pounds which is how much the latest sort of standard size transformers are at the moment so that's a lot of toy for your money um, scale wise that's how she compares to the human figures the sculpting on it is amazing, um, not really much paint, again you have the silver on the teeth, you have the silver on the inner teeth, and you have a slight blue metallic sheen on this top plate, and, and just that top plate alone is really gorgeous, I mean, very organic looking. The plastic's actually a really good match for it. It's this sort of ever so slightly shiny, um, wet look to it. Don't know if it's really coming off on camera. Uh, but whenever I've seen photos of this, I've thought, okay, this is gonna look very cheap, very kiddie, very much like you know a kid's bath toy, but no, I'm 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 very impressed with it. Box claims 12 points of articulation, so let's go. So the head is, it looks like a ball joint, but it is, it's a swivel and this mechanism. Um, the shoulders are on very chunky universals, as are the elbows. There is nothing at the wrists. The second arms, which are, again, that softer plastic. Everything else is quite hard. Yeah. Um, each of the arms is on a ball joint. These fins at the back are that soft plastic. The legs are the legs are a little bit disappointing. They are on just a rotation joint at the hip. and a ball joint at the feet. As I said, she's a bit too big for my setup. 
The tail has a couple of points of articulation. The mushroom joint where you snap it together gives you 360. And the end piece is probably again on a mushroom joint because it just gives you a turn there. And you can just about see the blue sheen on that, the same as the head. This is that slightly softer plastic again. Top half of the tail is very rugged. If anything, I think that this alien queen might actually be a little bit too big for this toy scale. The sets that I have yet to pick up really have the best of the Colonial Marine stuff. That's the Power Loader, the APC, and the Sentry Cannons, all from Aliens 2. Um, I think the Power Loader is probably the weakest of those. It looks a little bit cheap, like they've taken a lot of artistic license with it. And I think when I put that next to the Queen, it's just going to look absolutely tear -G. I mean, if you have the NECA version of the Power Loader and Ripley, this might actually go really well with that, although you probably are going to have to go over this with a lot of gloss black spray paint and go in and do your own detail colouring. If you're buying these for little kids, to whom you are absolutely not going to be showing the film until they're at least whatever the age on the DVD case says, then the size difference really isn't going to be such a major issue. I mean, all they need to know is this is the big bad guy. So these three sets combined come up to about £40, and usually at this point I'd be complaining about how much that is, but for this many figures and this much detail on the aliens, that's really not bad at all. The included humans, weapons, vehicles, etc. really are just box dressing, and the star of the shows are the aliens themselves. The sculpts are fantastic, the articulation is amazing, and whilst I understand why they didn't go for the classic movie colour scheme, I don't hate these. With the massive Alien Queen, they've obviously learned a lot from their Kong Skull Island figures, and she feels very chunky, very sturdy, and the amount of sculpted detail on her really does stop her from looking cheap. Of the two smaller Alien figures, I have to say I really love the runner. There's something about that particularly gory pink, the way the hands are articulated, which just make it overall a creepy, gory looking toy, and I love it. The Warrior Alien is a really good representation, and I look forward to getting a couple more when the other sets hit the UK. In the UK, these are exclusive to Smith's Toys, who are probably one of the last big box toy retailers to survive the oncoming storm of things like Amazon, and if you're not convinced enough to go straight over to their website and order them, they are now out on the shelves, and you can make your mind up for yourself. If you have found this video informative, if you want to see what happens when the rest of the figures turn up, please hit subscribe, please turn on notifications, and until next time, if you're keeping the mint in package, you're not a toy collector, you're a box collector. So this is kind of a little extra bonus I'd put up if I was doing Patreon, with a little bit of engineering a little bit of paint I think I got a pretty good uh, Nostromo pressure suit out of that um, basically it was just repainting it adding some PLA base material um, the backpack is pretty much kibbled together out of my parts bin I put together the flashlight really happy with how that turned out it does have foot pegs but they're a little bit loose but I thought well if I'm doing 3d printing and I'm getting raft material why don't I turn that into a base I've got black glue sticks okay so before you get too worried I'm just hot gluing this to the base um, I've actually covered the feet in WD-40 just so that I can lift them out when the glue is completely cooled. Oops. 
So I'm just putting some little blobs of glue on, kind of more to texture it than anything else. It was just coming out a little bit too smooth. So there we have that sort of nice gooey look. It's got the mixture of the black and the clear glue on there. And it's actually taken the imprint of one of the foot pegs. So once that's done completely cooled, I'll put the figure on it.